Hi, everybody. This is TJ with NetPicksTrading.com. I want to talk to you about some of the trades this week, particularly crude oil. It's just been on fire. I mean, it's on a historic run as far as our trade planning goes. And you know I'm a big stickler with trade plans. I'm a huge believer that the way to get to your financial goals through trading is to have a trade plan that you can prove works and will continue to grow your equity. And then you just focus on that plan. You execute it the same way each and every day. And as your account grows, you're able to increase your position size. You don't have to work harder. You just need a good trade plan. And the work to establish a good trade plan is the hardest work. It happens before you ever take a trade. So if you focus on that and focus on the pre-production side of your trading, you can come up with a trade plan or you could prove to yourself one of the trade plans that I've created for you. Either way, the results of the trade plan, that's where the money is. I want to go through some trades this week on crude oil and just kind of take a look at what it's done. Over the last 26 sessions, crude oil has won 24 sessions out of 26 and the, and the two that it didn't win, it broke even. So I'm counting the crude oil report as an additional session. So that's, that's like six sessions a week. I'll show you on the spreadsheet in a moment. Let's start with Monday's crude oil trade. Starts at nine. And by the way, this is a model. You could use this for whatever markets you're interested in. I just happen to think that crude oil has been the top performer um, recently. All right, so let's just, let's just walk through it and I'll show you what it did. So we start at 9, and there's a short right here. It's a little bit early. It's two minutes early. Some of you might choose to get in sync with this trade. So at 9 o'clock, maybe you look to see if you can grab the short and then take it. But my typical approach has been to just wait for a fresh setup. I just try to keep the concepts really simple. So this is too early. We have to wait for 9. And the first trade is a long trade right here. Right? You got the... The proximity of our exhaustion on the 50 moving average, those typically make nice trades. You saw another one earlier over here. Uh, so the first trade takes a few bars, but ultimately triggers in, and it's really straightforward. And it just zooms right up, hitting a perfect target three. Of course, target two is our, our objective. 16 ticks, $160 a contract. You could take another contract off at target three. That was good for $220 a contract. And then, of course, the trailer. But that's all she wrote. I mean, that was the trade. And literally, getting in right here at 12 minutes after 9, hitting target 3 four minutes later, stopping out with the trailer 20 minutes into the session. That's like, what, eight, seven or eight minute session right there. And that's it. You don't have to trade more. So I'll try to keep this video somewhat short. I don't want it to be too lengthy. I just want you to really lock in on the key concepts. So let's just be disciplined. The next session is Tuesday, nine o'clock, looking for that first setup. And there it is right there. You don't have to guess. If you've done your homework, you just take your trade because if you look at the results, the trade plan grows equity. It accomplishes the goals. So you get short at 14. It's a 13 tick target objective and it hits money management, pushes through, trying to get to that target still and look at that it touches it perfectly on this bar right here and so you you know you have to be quick you got to check your fills if you're not filled you might want to quickly mark it out of your whatever your target two position was and of course I've got videos on how to do that using the single market order matrix template so you want to practice those kind of maneuvers but in regardless it hits it again so perfect target before it comes up, and that's it. So literally from 9.04 to 9.11. I mean, that's a seven-minute session right there. And you're done. You don't need to keep trading. When I show you the spreadsheet in a moment, hopefully when I, when I tell you you don't need to keep trading, that'll convince you. Let's look at Wednesday. All right, so Wednesday, of course, this is our crude oil session day, but we also have the morning session. So waiting for the first trade, clearly a really nice trade here, but too early. So we're waiting, and then you see a setup right there. It's possible that'll be the trade that ends up getting taken, and it still stays active. The, the plus signs, the little entry signs, are hidden behind the exhaustion dots, but you could tell it's still active 
because you've only had one close below the balance line. This gray bar closes up on the balance line. The trade remains valid and ultimately triggers in right there. So that's like 10 minutes into the session. And it's going for a nine tick target. I typically want a 10 tick target minimum unless I've made an adjustment, okay? But I haven't, there's no adjustments to be made. So for me, the objective would be target three because target two is less than 10 ticks. So just quickly, in case you're unaware of this, I've changed the way I do crude oil there's a few nuanced differences with the, the settings I use in the calculator, and I guess this is a good time just to remind you. So I'll open up the calculator and show you that the money management level, where is it? Right here. The default settings says that it has to go to the, the little itty bitty dot, which is a 0.9x, right? And the default setting says it has to go eight ticks. But with crude oil, I make it 10 ticks. It's a just two ticks difference. And for me, that makes a big difference because I've noticed that crude oil kind of needs a little more room when it's developing, when the trade's developing. I don't want to get knocked out of a trade prematurely and then miss the move. Every now and then, you know, it'll not work. But for the most part, I believe this is the better option for you is just give that trade a little more room. And so when target two is nine ticks and the money management is 10 ticks. So it has to go 0.9x, which would be down here, but it also has to go 10 ticks. So it pushes the money management up to here. So when that happens, the position that I would take off at target two, I'm just gonna take it off at target three instead. Okay, and then the only other thing that I think I changed here that you should know about is I've got the, the EMA crossover filter, the default setting is at 20, I use eight. And then on the key level adjustments, this one other little thing is I do adjust um, on the entries. If I'm going long and the entries at a 0.04, I will adjust it to the 0.06. So by making this a one instead of a zero, you adjust around the five cent increments in price levels. And I just think that makes a difference with crude oil. Okay, but everything else is the same. Yeah, everything else is the same. So it's those three different uh, little changes is what I do. And that's what we do in the trade room, okay? So let's just see what happens on Wednesday morning. Obviously, taking the nine ticks would have been a winner. Target two, I'm tr and, and now the stop will move up to break even, but target three is what I'm after in this case, and it comes down and stops out. So Clearly, my own personal sentiments didn't work as well on this trade because you could have got nine ticks and been finished, and now we don't have our what would be a target two objective, right? Because target two actually became target three because of the minimum that I'm requiring for my trading, so I need to take one more trade. So this counts as a break-even trade, okay? Just I want to talk it through to you clearly so that you understand what I the way I like to do this trade plan. It does mean you have to follow this model, but you'll see how the results are. So anyway, the short here is the second trade. And I love this kind of pattern where it's crossing over and then kind of pauses a little and the price comes up and tests in here. It's even, I like it even more when it, you know, fails below the yellow line. But in this case, we don't know if it's failing yet but it does start to come down and you could see the curling down of the 50 and a little bit of the bending down of the 200 and you got this kind of bar with the wick stab stabbing up through the lines and then closing down these kind of bars are really bearish in this case and then we get the short so i mean this is a kind of trade i like because you have an action move down and a reaction that's between one to two thirds of the action and there's a good chance there will be a subsequent action that will mirror this, this one here. You know, you have to kind of think abstractly on a bigger time frame because you also see smaller action, reaction, action, reaction, you know, action, reaction, action, and those all work too. This is a bigger one. So for me, this whole, this looks really nice. It doesn't mean it's gonna win, but it's the kind of trade that I'm typically, you know, if I'm spotting it, I'm interested in that. And then the trade plan says to take it anyway, because it's trade number two. So that's the trade. And how's it going to do? Well, I don't know yet. 
it did just hit money management here. So you can see the stop comes down and gives a free, a free trade. And the trade plan is a full target winner or two money management trades. Okay, but this one does go down and stab through. Uh, it hits a perfect target too again right there. So while my trade plan rules kind of impacted the first trade negatively, it enhanced the trade plan results because it required a second trade, and that was good for 18 ticks and $180, right? So remember, it's the results of the trade plan that matters. It's not the results of an individual trade. This is something that gives so many traders trouble because when they're in the trade, they're trying to impact it. They're trying to get it to win somehow or get it to not lose so much somehow. And what you have to realize is that the individual trade isn't what makes you money because you have to take another trade and another and another and it never stops. We're traders. So there's got to be something more than just the individual trade. And once you realize that, you will start to see a breakthrough in your results. It's the trade plan results that make you money. I cannot emphasize that enough. So this one, of course, ends up, I mean, that's a perfect trade. Look how perfect that is. It couldn't have gone any further. And the action moved down. Didn't quite get all the way to target four or target three, but it was still a good move and a perfect trade for us. And that's another winning session. So this is Wednesday and there's a second session. We start fresh and it's the crude oil report. So let's check that one out. That starts at 9.30, uh, 10.30. We wait two minutes. Normally you're seeing me trade counterpunch trader, but spotlight, I believe, is it's probably more profitable to trade spotlight. I think the results are even better. And when you look at uh, what I show you in a few moments, you'll see that. So let's just take a quick peek. So waiting two minutes, waiting, waiting, waiting. There's a two minute mark right in here. So you have to take the next trade. It's the long trade right there and nothing new to learn. And it just kind of does its thing. Look at that. That's a beautiful trade. Look at target four. And so target two, the primary objective, 17 ticks, 170 bucks, additional positions making money to target three, target four, or trail. And then it stops out, and that's just the absolute perfect trade. And another one and done session, and another winning session. Let's just look at Thursday and Friday briefly, and then let's review some bigger concepts. And I'll let you go. All right, so this is our trade on Thursday, the 8th, and we're waiting for 9 o'clock. And, you know, these kind of setups with the kind of hover around here and, you know, maybe you get in sync with that if that was right at 9 because it just it set up moments earlier. But, you know, that's a little more advanced. And anyway, it's not 9 anymore. It's stabbed up too far right at 9. So, you know, you let it go. Go with the next trade. First trade. And a good thing because it didn't even get to money management and that would have been a loser but here's the first trade it's a yellow trade right there and the you kind of have to look because the plus signs you can make those bigger so that you can see them easier but you know what to look for and you can see the stops across the top you should know that's a trade and it stays valid 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 and finally triggers in right here so we're getting short at uh, 61.49 and it's just a small little 10 tick trade i hate those trades but you know what? There's a reason we have a minimum, and that does meet the requirement, 10 ticks. And it does come down and stab through. And in one trade, you're hitting a target to winner. So notice once it hits its full target, that's also the money management zone, right? Because 10 ticks. So target two, it's also 10 ticks. A little dot is hidden in there. And then the stop moves down. But instead of locking in one tick, the calculator is saying, you know what, it's probably worth keeping a couple ticks of risk on this trade to try to make it even more profitable. Let's put our stop around the 51 cent, you know, at 51, around the 50 cent level. Because we got short at 49, we could put our stop at 48, right? But we already made 10 ticks. Let's see if we can stay in for a bigger move because if this comes up and retests, there's a good chance it won't get past the key level of 50 cents. So let's hide our stop at 51. And when you look at the calculator, let me just show you this really quick when go down to the key levels. This section here is the major key level and it's set to 50. That means the 50 cent increment. So 50 cent and, and uh, zero zeros, the dollars. And so what it says is, is that if you get within two ticks 
move the entry one tick beyond, and here is the stop zone. If it gets within two ticks, move it one tick to the other side. Okay, so 48 is two ticks from 50, the key, the major key level. So the calculator puts it one tick beyond, and that's why that stop is at 51. And it's a real intelligent maneuver because you don't have to think about it. It's doing it for you. You see? So look what happens. It does stab up to 50, and the stop is at 51, but then it closes down and then pushes lower. Now the stop is going to push down because you see how it gave the trade the room it needed to develop? That's what these concepts are supposed to do. But now that it's pushing lower, 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 you've earned the right to make more money. And besides, the balance line's pushing lower. And the balance line marks the balance of power between buyers and sellers. So the stop pushes down and hides a couple ticks above, adjusting around key levels as well. And what a difference that makes because it pushes through and hits a target three. And that was good for 15 ticks. And still comes down and pushes down and hits a perfect target four, like perfect, look at that. And target four was good for 20 ticks and the stop keeps pushing down also and then finally stops out right there. What a trade, right? But notice how the tools and the trade plan rules and the maneuvers all work together in concert to get the most out of that trade. All right, let's just look at Friday. So we keep seeing these great setups that begin a few minutes early. This one was like six minutes before the start time, and when it finally triggers in, it's already past nine. But it went up pretty far, came down, and if you get in sync, you just take the trade. But remember what I said, we're just waiting for the next fresh setup. Now, if the price had just kind of hung right in there, or if it hadn't triggered in yet, and then it's nine, hadn't really moved yet, that's the one time I kind of allow getting in sync. It doesn't happen very often, and it's just another complication. <laughs> and it's just something that, you know, you could choose to do if you want. I like to show the get in sync trades because getting in sync is a concept that works great. It's just if you're going to do it, make sure you test it and like the results as how it affects your trade plan. Okay, so let's just stick with what we do. Next fresh setup, 905. There it is, short trade. 59.89, you see your targets, 18 tick target two is a nice size trade, and it hits money management. This is such a straightforward trade because it just goes straight to target. Look at target two, the perfect stab down. Comes up and retests the 50 as it's failed to meet the 200 and is starting to bend lower. Could have an action. Not much of a reaction, which in, in, implies that the action move might still be going. And look at that, it just stabs through target three, it's diving down, the trailer's tracking it, it's to target four, and then finally finishes right there. I mean, what a trade. And literally from 9.05 to the finish line here at the stop at 9.19. But if you're just going to target two, I mean, it gets there. It looks like it goes pretty fast, but it actually is pretty orderly because it took, what, like almost 10 minutes to get from here to here. So it's a little bit slower um, time-wise, but you know the market doesn't care about time. You could just see that. And the perfect week, not a single losing trade this week, which leads me to what I'm gonna show you next. So just really quickly, as you know, when I, or maybe you don't know, but when I track a trade in, the, in um, Spotlight in my, my spreadsheet, I'm tracking five positions so that I could see how the position does at target one, target two, target three, target four, and trail. Because sometimes it'll only go to target one, and then the rest will stop out for only one tick. Or it'll go to target two, and then the rest will stop out with a partial profit. And so it's not obvious which one of these produces the best. So I track them all, so then I can go back and kind of analyze them later. Okay, so these this block of five trades is really one trade. You can see the same entry, the same start time, just different exit points. So this is just for me to learn, right? So you have to kind of take it uh, in context that, you know, those five winners, it's one winner, okay? This 58 cents, that's if you traded five positions to four targets in a trailer. Notice target four only got five ticks, for example. On the next day, it hit our target two objective and then stopped out. It was, that was that perfect trade 
right? But we're finished. So the dynamics of taking what the market wants to give you, allowing you to quit positive most of the time while minimizing your drawdown with efficient trading. So these are all the trades of the session, and you could just see not a single losing session. And if I go back to the following week, the session the Friday before was a winner, Thursday before was a winner, there was a losing trade. We don't care, right? It's how we finish. The day before a winning session, the day before, a lot of one and dones. This what the day before had to take several trades. Finally finished positive. The day before, the day before, the day before. Look at these are all winning sessions, right? It's relative as to how much. This one was like a break-even session. You had the two break-evens that achieves the goals of the trade plan. And just going back, you could just see winning session after winning session. Finally, one that, you know, I consider that a break-even. This was a break-even, so you had two break-evens in a row, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, you know, you have to go way back before you find a losing session. This one, finally a losing session here. And this was all the way back on October 10th. And if you look at the performance report, Look at what, you know, October 10th is, this is October 1st, 9th, it's right here. So since that losing session, look what's happened. This is a result of your trade plan, right? Don't get caught up in the results of a losing trade or two or a losing session. There's not a lot of drawdown in here. Here's a period of time where you just don't make much money. Right, you're trading up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You're kind of, you know, if you're a human being trying to trade, you're getting frustrated. You might even be quitting. But would you hate to quit and then come back and see this happen right after you quit? This too. This was a period of time that was a little hard, but those that stuck with it got this as a result. It's the trade plan that matters, guys. Treat it like a business. Run it like a business. Sometimes businesses have slow periods, but the profits come rolling in. The busy periods come back. And if you've got a really great strategy and a really great trade plan, you can quit positive most of the time. By the way, the strategy is quitting positive on their sessions like 87% of the time. And that's who wouldn't want that? Okay. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining me. More to come. Look forward to the Spotlight 2.0. Some of the videos I'll be coming out with in the near future are going to be showing you what that can do. And then we're going to look at some swing trades as well because there are some amazing options trades uh, that are happening with the Spotlight on the swing trade side of things. And we're going to take a good look at that as well. All right, so see you guys again in the next video.